I didn't pause the video. Yeah. Trying chilled whiskey today. <clears throat> Messenger is really hard on the third boss. Third boss of Messenger is pretty hard. That frickin' Gollum. Ugh. Died at least four times. Ugh. It's Comics and Shots, a completely improvised semi-comedic music by Howard Stern's Mick the Nerd, a.k.a. YouTube and TikTok's Mick the Man, a.k.a. Mick the Maverick, a.k.a. Not That Musician Called Mick Man. He hasn't sued me yet, so I assume we're cool. Today's subject, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. The upcoming Spider-Man cartoon coming to Disney+. Plus. Oh boy. Thank God. It's its own thing. It's not directly tied to the MCU. It's... It's an alternate universe where Norman Osborn is Peter's mentor instead of Tony. That's interesting. I like that. And my god, you have no idea how happy I am about that because I was so afraid this was going to be a goddamn midquel. Not a mid sequel, as in like middle of like quality. As like between like the sequel and, you know, the original one. Like some of those are okay in sparse amounts, like you know, My Adventures with Superman has, like, a comic run going on. Like, between seasons one and two. That's harmless. That's, like, level two canon. But then you have Star Wars The Clone Saga. Where no matter how much you wanted to enjoy it, you know that Anakin's gonna become Darth Vader. You know this is all just gonna come crumbling down. And even the writers feel bad about it because they were writing him as a frickin' hero for like three seasons. It's like, how are we supposed to make this guy become evil? It doesn't make sense from our narrative. Ugh. And lest I say about the Super Sons, the better. After Bendis and Didio aged up John Kent, they made like two Super Sons midquels. One of which was like a straight up like, monthly comic. The other which is, like, you know, like it was released online, featured a lot more time travel. Both were good, but you can't really enjoy them as much because, you know, this is just gonna end with John Kent go get getting warped to both Earth 3 and 7 years in the past. Don't ask how that makes any sense, especially given that... I, I don't know, it made no sense. And that the Super Sons are basically broken up as a team. And, you know, it's just hollow. But, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man isn't that. It's its own thing where Peter and Norman are going to be friends at first. Before Norman gets goblinized and everything goes bad. Utterly telegraphed. But, you know, I could see it working. I wonder how they'll do the love interest in this story. Spectacular Spider-Man did it kind of interesting, but it kind of bugged me how they made Gwen Stacy like the nerdy best friend in that show. Anyone who read the Silver Age books knows she was just as much of a of a like a, 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 a much of a Madonna as Mary Jane Watson was. Both absolute beauties running the campus, absolutely vying for. Well, not really both vying. Mary Jane was living free. You couldn't tie her down back then. Gwen, all about Peter, though. She wanted Peter. In fact, she was originally supposed to be Peter's endgame, but you know how these things change. Hmm. You know how these things change. <sighs> also, to all the pro-MJ people, I, including me, just because Gwen Stacy doesn't have a cool catchphrase doesn't mean she's not as valid a love interest for Peter. It's just they decided to kill her to add drama to the story. They also decided to kill Green Goblin, which... Yeah, um... Hmm. 
You either should have only killed Green Goblin or only killed Gwen Stacy. Both in one story is kind of a little too much. One, because Gwen was Peter's, like, endgame love interest. Two, the goblin hell that came afterwards, after the death of Norman Osborn. It was simple at first, and we had, like, Harry Osborn get the cow. Then there was the hobgoblin. And let's get real here, Ben Kingsley sucks. Am I- is that- is, is that an unpopular opinion? I don't think Hobgoblin's that good of a villain. It is Ben Kingsley, right? Am I thinking of an actor? I, I, I don't care that much about, I don't I care that little about Hobgoblin to get his name right. He's just Green Goblin if he was evil before taking the serum. That's it. There's no pathos or anything. And, oh, he's gonna blow stuff up. Who cares? He's not crazy. He's just a dick. Mm. And don't get me started on the publication history. Oof. Ugh. And then he got poor Phil Urich who tried to be a hero and became all of that. Uh, then you get Queen Goblin, not to be confused with Goblin Queen, aka Madeline Pryor. I can't believe editorial went with that. So dumb. Goblin Knight, Grey Goblin. Actually, I think Phil G Il Urich was Goblin Knight. Is Grey Goblin still canon? I hope he's not. Oh, I think he was with Kindred with. The, this twin clone sister. Uh, uh. And, you know, you got little Normie Jr. as frickin' wait, Harry Jr. as, like, the Red Goblin. Or whatever the hell he's calling himself. Uh, yeah. <sighs> we got enough goblins. And hopefully your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man only has one as well. Yeah. And utilizes some obscure Spider-Man rogues. Maybe a typeface. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they, if they do Scorpion, I, I hope they do something interesting with him. Like, I don't like Hobgoblin as a character, but with Scorpion, it's mostly just they never knew what to do with the character after, like, the first outing. He was the first evil Spider-Man, and they could have developed on it for that. Uh, they didn't. They just kept making him dumber and dumber. Keeping, constantly switching up his costumes and pseudonyms. He is essentially the supervillain equivalent. Mac Gargan is essentially the supervillain equivalent of Hank Pym. Appropriate, since their original pseudonyms were insect-themed. Well, opera-pod themed. Man. Either way, hoping the new Spider-Man cartoon is good, and, you know, uh, hoping it's better than most of the crap in the comics. <laughs> yeah. With that, like, comment, and subscribe, donate if you're feeling nice, share it with a bear, and I always remember, praise be to the Blood Elk, fear the Stab Epotamus, and death to Crimson. I like that. I like that.